Hi students, welcome to the lesson on solving rational equations. Okay, well, let's look back at what you might have seen uh, way back in grade 9. So this would have been a problem similar to a grade 9 problem, okay, where we had fractions within an equation. Okay, and, and then probably, <clears throat> or I hope, you were taught that the best way to solve these problems is to get rid of the fractions. So a little bit like what we did in the last lesson, uh, complex fractions, we're going to multiply by the common denominator, and what that's going to let us do is get rid of the fraction. So step one, we're going to multiply by the lowest common denominator, 6. So notice I multiply every single term by 6. I even multiply the 1 by 6, because technically I'm multiplying 6 on both sides of the equation to make sure that it balances out. So we're going to multiply the lowest common denominator. Now what's going to happen is that we're going to simplify. So this is simplifying the lowest common denominator and the current denominator. So for us here, that means 6 over 2 gives us 3. There's no denominator here. And then 6 over 3 gives us 2. And then 6 divided by 2 gives us 3. So really what we have left is 3 times x plus, well, I think I'm going to complete this multiplication. So 6 times 1 <clears throat> equals, and then we have 2 times x over here. And we have negative 3 uh, times 3x minus 1. So again, we've seen this before. This negative distributes into this bracket. So 3 times x is 3x plus 6. There's really nothing changed there. This is 2x. Nothing's changed there. And then now we have negative 3x plus 3. So again, that distributed negative into the bracket. Okay, we're going we're gonna to group uh, like terms together. So I'm going to just move over here to finish this. I ran out of room. So I'm going to have 3x plus 6 equals to negative x plus 3. And now we're going to bring all, we're going to group all the x's together on the same side, and we're going to bring all the constants to the other. So add x to this side gives us 4x. And now if I subtract 6 from both sides, I get negative 3, and x equals to negative 3 quarters. Okay, so that would be the solution for this problem. Alright, so now we're going to do something very similar, except that now we're going to have variables of x or other factors in the denominator. So here what we're going to do is we're going to first identify that we have an equation, right, an equal sign, because that's important. And then since we have an equation, we're going to multiply by the lowest common denominator. Well, the lowest common denominator, in our case, okay, we have a factor of 4, so 2 and 2. We have a factor of 5 and a factor of x. So the lowest common denominator is 20x. Right, which means that there is a non-permissible value that comes from that. And now, since this is an equation, right, non-permissible values will count against the equation. So if, you solu if your solution is one of these non-permissible values, you're going to have to reject that solution. We'll get to, there, to that eventually. Okay, so first, the non-permissible value here is whenever x is on the denominator cannot equal to 0, therefore x cannot equal to 0. All right, so to solve this equation, we're going to multiply every single term by our lowest common denominator, which is 20x. So 20x times 1 quarter, we have plus 20x times 11x, and equals 20x times our fraction of 4 fifths. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to simplify before we multiply. So 20 divided by 4 is 5. Don't forget the, the x is still there. Here the x's cancel out here. And here 20 divided by 5 is 4. So our next line, what we really have is we have 5x times 1. So notice that the denominator is gone. We have plus 20 times 11. And we have 4x times 4. Right, Because there's 4x left times the, nu the numerator from there. Okay, we're going to complete these operations, so 5x plus 220 equals to 16x. I'm going to bring all the x's to the same side, so bring the x over there. You have 220 equals to 11x, subtracted 5 on each side. We divide by 11, and what we get is 20. So the answer is x equals 20. Notice that x equals 20 is not a non-permissible value. Okay, and, but you probably should verify these, and uh, I'm going to do a quick verification here. So on the left -hand side, you have 1 quarter plus 11 over 20. Okay, common denominator is 20, so this is 5 over 20 
plus 11 over 20. So you have 16 twentieth. If we divide the, everything by 4 because we have a common factor, we have 5 quarters. Notice the right-hand side is also 5 quarters. Therefore, this would be the right-hand side, and this is the left-hand side. So therefore, these are equal. All right, so in the next example, so again, we're gonna, what you need to find is the lowest common denominator, and but before you find the lowest common denominator, you need to make sure you have all the factors on the denominator. Well, if you look at it, here this isn't completely factored just yet, so we're gonna completely factor that, so we have 3x over x plus one equals to 12 over, this is a difference of squares, so x plus one times x minus one, and then we have plus two. All right, so now it's time to find our lowest co common denominator. So I hope you guys can see that the factor of x plus 1 is both there and there. So x plus 1 is one factor. x plus 1 is a factor. Sorry. And then x minus 1 is the other factor. Okay, so before we keep going, let's find our non-permissible values. So non-permissible values is going to be x is equal to negative 1 or positive 1. So x cannot equal to plus or minus 1. All right, so again, if the one of those was a solution, you would automatically reject that. Okay, well, um, here in the addition and subtraction, we only multiply by the factor it was missing. In the equation, okay, we're going to multiply by the lowest common denominator. So what it's going to look like is you're going to go x plus 1 times x minus 1 all that times 3x over x plus 1, okay? And then you're going to multiply the next term by x plus 1 times x minus 1, and that all multiplies 12 over x plus 1 uh, and x minus 1. And don't forget, you're going to multiply the 2 as well. Even though the 2 doesn't have a fraction, doesn't have a denominator, it's still a term we have to multiply because you have to balance your equation, right? So that 2 also needs to be multiplied by that. But notice that neither factor is going to get uh, cancelled out. Okay, in this fraction here, the x plus 1 will be cancelled out, so get rid of that on the, on the denominator. Notice here, both will be cancelled out. And then here, like I said, nothing. So let's rewrite what I have here. I have 3x times x minus 1 equals, well, this is just 12. And then we have plus 2 times. And just to sim simplify this a little bit, this is the difference of squares, right? This is x squared minus 1, so that's what I'm going to write. I'm going to write x squared minus 1. So that's just the expanded version of that, right? That's the expanded version of that, sorry. <clears throat> okay, so now I, I, I distribute my 3x, so now you have 3x squared minus 3x. So the idea is we want equal 0, we want a factor, right? We have x squares and x's in my equation. I want equal to 0 on one side, and I want to be able to factor the rest. So that equals to two, 12 plus 2x squared minus 2. We're going to bring everything over to this side because here the largest uh, x squared is on this side, so I'm going to bring everything over here. So I'm going to have 3x squared minus 2x squared when it comes over. So you're going to have x squared Okay, and then negative 3x is the only x's we got going on here. And then we have 12 and negative 2, so there's 10 over here. When you bring it over to the other side, it becomes negative 10. Okay, and we factor x minus 5, x plus 2 equals 0. And look at that, we have two solutions, x equals 5 and x equals negative 2. Okay, so you should always verify to make sure these equations work. Notice that neither one of these is a non-permissible value, so that's good. And as, unless you made a mistake, these will always work, again, as long as they're not one of these. Okay, if you made a mistake, well, obviously, they might not work out. Okay, so for the time purposes, I'll let you verify those, those variables for yourself, but they will both work. So both of those are solutions to this problem. All right, last example. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to factor the denominator as much as possible. Well, that's factored out already. That's factored out already. That one is not. So, we got a little bit of work to do before we get going. We have 4x minus 1, that's 4, uh, divided by x plus 2, minus x plus 1 over x minus 2. And now we got this part factored out here. 
Notice that you don't have to factor out the numerator. You can if you want, but you don't have to. And then you're going to have x minus 2 and x plus 2 because, well, that's a difference of squares again. And lowest common denominator. So you're looking for all the factors. Notice the factor of x plus 2 is a factor, but only once. Only once because it appears once here and once here. So x plus 2 is one factor. And I hope you can identify the other one, which is x minus 2. Same idea. Non-permissible values. All right, well, we're here again. These are pretty easy. Right, it's when those two are equal to zero. So x cannot equal to negative two and positive two. So plus or minus, whoops, plus or minus. Let's see if I can rewrite that a little bit better. Plus or minus two. Okay, well, we're doing the exact same pro uh, uh, problem. Again, you're solving an equation, an equation. So your hint is multiply by the lowest common denominator. That's what you got to remember. So I got to multiply this one by x plus 2, ah, let's try to rewrite that, it's going to go pretty wide here, so we're going to go x plus 2 times x minus 2, and all that is multiplying 4x minus 1 divided by x plus 2, right, so that's the current fraction we have here, okay, and then we subtract x plus 2, it's getting hard to write it's with the space I have, uh, times x minus 2, and all that's going to multiply the fraction, x plus 1, over x minus 2. So that's the current fraction here, right? And we multiply it by the lowest common denominator. And then the last one, and I hope you guys can start seeing what's going to happen. When I multiply by this on this side, both of those are going to go away. And all you're going to be left with that. However, I'm still going to write it just for the purposes of your notes. So you have x minus 2, x plus 2. And all that is multiplying by x squared minus 4x plus 24. I'm going to fit. Nice. And uh, there's x minus 2 and x plus 2 on the denominator. And all that is here. Okay. So we cancel out the factors, right? So you're going to cancel that factor out. You're going to cancel that factor out. And now this time we're going to cancel both of those factors out. So what are we left with? Well, over here we're left with x minus 2 times 4x plus minus 1. I'm just rewriting this just to organize my thoughts here. Um, you could actually end up multiplying these without showing this step. But I think just to organize your ideas, it might be good, especially for your notes, to do this. And here we have x squared minus 4x plus 24. Okay, well, I hope you guys noticed that there's some expansion you're going to go on. Again, you're kind of the same idea. I want to regroup all the like terms, so all the x squares got to go to one side, and I want all the x's to go to the same side, and I want all the constants, and then on the other side, I want equals 0. So, we expand this, so this would be 4x squared, and then this is negative 8 and negative 1, so that's negative 9x plus 2. The plus 2 comes from those two multiplied, right? And then I'm going to put a negative in front here, because, and I'm going to put brackets because often people forget that this negative is going to distribute in this whole thing. And this whole thing is x squared plus 3x plus 2. So again, I got this 3x by saying this is 2x and 1x together makes 3x. And here I have x squared minus 4 plus 24. Okay, and we're going to keep going. So now I'm going to distribute this negative here. Okay, I, mean, I might go underneath my page. Sorry, guys, if you don't have a room. I would tighten it up if you, ha if you can right now. So minus 9x plus 2, minus x squared, minus 3x, minus 2, equals to x squared minus 4x plus 24. Okay, so I'm going to bring everything over to the other side. I'm going to do this all in one step just to save myself a little bit of space. So you have 4x squared minus x squared. You're going to have another minus x squared over there. You're going to have 2x squared left. Okay? So you're going to have negative 9x, negative 3x, so it's negative 12. When this 4 comes over, it becomes positive 4. So negative 12 plus 4 is negative 8x. Okay, now we look at our constants. Plus 2, minus 2. Well, those cancel out, right? And you're going to get negative 24 coming back the other way. All right, so now we got some factoring to go on. So I'm going to first factor my common factor of 2. 
And now I can factor this to negative 6 plus 2 equals 0. So I have two solutions, x equals 6, x equals negative 2. And don't forget the non-permissible value over here. x cannot equal to plus or minus 2. That means this solution is rejected, and the only solution we accept is that one. And again, to, for time purposes, I'll let you do it, but all you got to do is verify that 6 works in this equation from the original. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the lesson, and good luck solving rational equations.